Greetings, man and woman from north, south, east, and west. Hi, I'm back, and thank you for joining my spiritual channel, Apple Tree. Today, we are discussing six words to say through tears, the source of comfort and the pain of grief. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this time to come to you. Lord, please open our minds to understanding the Bible. Open our eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. Give us understanding so that we can desire to know you better. Let your Holy Spirit guide us into the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So today is a different message because we're talking about condolences, grief, comfort, and six words to say through tears. We're speaking on the source of comfort and the pain of grief. So, I'm an empath, highly sensitive with the ability to understand and feel mentally and emotionally what another person is experiencing. It's a keen sense to feel a great deal of empathy to the point of taking on the experience of someone else's as if it were my own. So I can pick up on people's energy so with all that is happening around us in the world and for some in our own personal worlds, there's been heavy energies of anguish, sorrow, depression, people overcome with grief, remorse, sadness, a lot of hurt, pain, and heartbreak and tears. So many have lost loved ones. People have lost loved ones to the novel COVID-19. People are losing themselves in sufferings of their loss to the point of torment, despair, and heartache. I can feel it. So I wanted to do research and study on what God's word has to say to support such heaviness. Because only spiritually Spirituality can truly support and comfort this kind of heaviness. The first scripture I was led to is Second Corinthians chapter five, verse eight, and it says. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So, with the wind laced with grief worldwide, it leaves a lot of people 
grasping for truth. When we're reeling from the loss of someone we love, we look for something solid to grab hold of, to find stability in a storm of sadness and clarity in a sea of confusion. Some of the things we grab hold of are profoundly true and therefore prove to steady us in the storm. But some of the things we grab hold of originates from a vacuous spirituality. Vacuous meaning an expressionless or an absence of spirituality. Shallow beliefs of our modern culture instead of from the solid truth of God's word. They, may sound, they might sound nice, they may sound nice, but they simply aren't true. Or perhaps more often, they are only partly true. Some of the very spiritual sounding things we say to ourselves or hear others say to us in the midst of grief have no scriptural basis or even contradict scripture. You see, comfort is the one thing you cannot get by looking for it. If you look for truth, you may find comfort in the end. If you look for comfort, you will not get either comfort or truth. Only soft soap, wishful thinking to begin with, and in the end, despair. Despair is like a hopelessness. People mean well when they say my condolences. People mean well when they say they're in a better place. People mean well, but it still begins with and ends with that despair feeling left lingering behind those words. So, we search for something to grab hold of in the midst of grief that will bring comfort. Or as we search for words to say to someone else who is grieving, we want to make sure that what we're grabbing hold of or offering to someone else to hold on to is profoundly, fully, and eternally true. So in my research, I was led to six words that you can say through the tears. Those six words are, I can trust God with this. I can trust God with this. I've been asking myself, what are the profoundly and eternally true things that someone can grab hold of in the midst of grief that will serve as an anchor for the soul when the winds and waves of grief are coming over the bow and threatening to take us down for good? Well, I think the answer is essentially one thing that has many Iterations, which meaning you can say this repetitively as a process or implications. You can say it repetitively as a suggestion, as a connection, which is I can trust God with this. You can say those six words through tears. 
what to say to grieving people. Because when we speak to grieving people, our words really matter. So the next time, instead of just saying condolences and leaving that to linger, we can say, you can trust God with this to someone that is grieving. But when we are the ones who are grieving, what is far more important than what other people say to us is what we say to ourselves. What we say to ourselves in between crying our eyes out. When we have more questions than answers. When the emptiness feels overwhelming. When anger is hardening our heart. When the grief is fresh and intense. We might take some wild ideas for a test drive. But before we start beating ourselves up of why are we still here and, and our loved ones are gone. and why, did this, why didn't this happen to me and... I don't want to live anymore. Before we start taking those wild ideas for a test drive, let's think on moving towards healing and return to joy. And that requires that we press this one idea deeply into our souls until it begins to impact us at the level of our feelings. I can trust God with this. You see, saying to ourselves when we are the ones who are grieving, again, is far more important than what other people say to us, is what we say to ourselves. I can trust God with this has all kinds of implications, suggestions, connections, that bring peace in the midst of grief's chaotic thoughts and emotions. I can trust God with this means I can trust God with the timing of my loved one's death. I can trust God with the way my loved one died. I can trust God with the unknowns about my future. I can trust God with my unanswered questions until faith becomes sight. I can trust God to heal the hurt. I can trust God to feel the emptiness. I can trust God to illuminate this darkness. I can trust God to restore joy to my life. I can trust God to speak to me through his word. I can trust God to supply sufficient grace and divine power for facing whatever comes. I can trust God to cause this to work together for my good and for the good of others impacted by this, to conform us more closely to the image of Christ. I can trust God that Resurrection Day is really coming and it will be worth all the waiting. You see, even if, or perhaps especially, 
if we're unsure if the person who died was genuinely joined to Christ by faith, we can say, I can trust that God knows who belongs to him, even if I don't know if my loved one belonged to him. I can trust that God will do what is right, even if I don't know what God will do. I can put my trust in a God who is merciful and loves to save, even if I don't know if my loved one trusted in that mercy or took hold of that salvation. You have to speak to your thoughts. When the sorrow of life seemed to mock the dependency of God to the psalmist who wrote Psalm chapter 42, the psalmist who wrote chapter 42 in the book of Psalms, sorrow of his life seemed to mock his dependence on God. And he wrote in the 42, in Psalm chapter 42, this psalmist who felt again that his sorrow of life was seeming to mock his dependence on God. He wrote, my tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? My tears have been my food day and night while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? The psalmist, his agonized emotions were speaking to him, suggesting that God had abandoned him. So he challenged that voice rather than believe it. He confronted what was being said to him rather than letting it determine his outlook. The psalmist poured out his complaint to God, but he also intentionally spoke to his own soul in both a questioning and instructive tone. And he wrote Psalm chapter 42, verse 5. He wrote this intentionally confronting his own soul, saying, What are thou cast down? Why are thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. So again, his agonized emotions were speaking to him, mocking him because he was depending on God in the midst of his sorrow. His agonizing emotions were speaking to him, suggesting that God had abandoned him. So again, he challenged that voice rather than believe it. He confronted it rather than letting it determine his outlook, rather than sinking into depression, seeking into guilt, sinking into darkness. He challenged his own soul and he said, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Again, that's Psalm chapter 42, verse five. Rather than listening to his own desperate thoughts, he spoke truth to his thoughts. You have to speak truth to your thoughts in the midst of grieving your loved ones. Rather than trusting his feelings, he challenged them. Rather than talking about the truth of the gospel as something out there for other people, he applied it to himself personally praying to God, he preached hope to himself. 
That's what we must do in the midst of our tears. That's what we must do. When our agonizing emotions are mocking us by depending on God, when our agonizing emotions are suggesting that God has abandoned us, we are to challenge that inner voice rather than believing it. Confront that inner voice that is trying to sink us in despair. Confront it with the word of God, which is hope. God gives us hope. Intentionally speak to your own soul instructively that there is hope in God. That's what we must do in the midst of our tears. We must speak to our thoughts. We must grasp the truth. And we can recite those six words through tears saying, I can trust God with this. Sometimes people question God. Is pain my punishment? You've heard the expression the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Or better, the unjust and the unjust. For we are all sinners. All of us are or will be victims of pain. It's simply a fact of our existence, regardless of how good or how bad we are. Life isn't fair. No. But there is one who justifies life and understands our pain. When we face struggles, we often wonder why. Years from now, though we may realize that it was those struggles that taught us something we could not have otherwise learned, that there was a purpose in our pain. And years from now, we will understand it better than we do today. God's purpose is greater than the pain. He has a greater purpose than the problems. Your cries are not going to slow down the purpose of God. Have confidence in that. I can trust God with this. Let us pray. Dear God, teach us to set our hopes on heaven, to hold firmly to the promise of eternal life so that we can withstand the struggles and storms of this world. May your holy word be a soothing medicine to our wounded hearts. Jesus, counsel those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Let them be comforted in the remembrance of your promises. Give to those who mourn peace in the midst of their tears. Father, you know our hearts and share our sorrows. Lord Jesus, I know that you are close to those that are brokenhearted and grieving in their soul. I know you rescue those that are crushed in spirit. I ask that you draw near to your many children who are facing times of sadness 
and loss and draw each one ever closer into your precious arms of love and support. Lord, I pray for those who mourn for parents and children, friends and neighbors. Be gentle with them in their grief. Show them the depths of your love. Spare them the torment of guilt and despair. And oh God, who brought us to birth and in whose arms we die. In our grief and shock, contain and comfort us. Embrace us with your love. Give us hope in our confusion and grace to let go into new life through you, Jesus Christ. And remind us daily, I can trust God. I can trust you, Lord, with this. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.